श्री परमात्मने नमः अथ अष्टमोध्याय अक्षर ब्रह्म योग बिफोर वी स्टार्ट विथ चैप्टर एट वी विल डू अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ इंट्रोडक्शन टू वॉट द चैप्टर finished with the seven uh, terms krishna and arjuna he has this doubt what are the seven terms so this chapter starts with question from arjuna asking krishna to explain what these seven terms are so this uh, chapter is called the akshara brahma yoga uh, because uh, krishna is going to say akshara brahma paramam he is going to say that this brahman is Uh, indestructible and it is supreme like that he is going to say and hence the name of this chapter is the akshara brahma yoga so what are these seven terms so we have seen brahman adhyatmam karma adibhutam adidevam adiyagnya ananta kala smaran this chapter what it talks about is upasana and upasana phalam so what is upasana if you remember from chapter 6 the sanskrit definition will be saguna brahma dhyana roopa manasa vyaparah but you don't need to know this it is just means that mind's activity on meditation of the saguna brahman so the mind's activity on the meditation of the saguna brahman so what is saguna brahman saguna brahman we have seen two brahmans one is a saguna brahman that is a god is called saguna brahman when you associate maya with the brahman the god of attributes the god of form the god of shape the god of qualities all this you call the saguna brahman the god you worship every day but nirguna brahman is the god without attributes when you remove this maya then what stands there is just the nirguna brahman so there are two aspects here the saguna brahman and the nirguna brahman when you meditate on the saguna brahman this is known as the upasana that we saw in chapter 6 when you focus on the nirguna brahman this is known as the nididhyasana that we saw that there was a difference between upasana and nididhyasana upasana we said in chapter 6 will have rules there is like rules on where to sit how to sit uh, how to do it upasana has rules nididhyasana is not very uh, strict it doesn't have so many rules you are meditating on the nirguna brahman if you are doing upasana in your life there will be some fruits of the upasana so which can be broken down into two that is like sakatma upasana and nishkama upasana so what is sakatma upasana when you are meditating on god with a desire in your mind that is called as a sakatma upasana so when you do the sakatma upasana there will be some fruits every action will give some fruits so what will be the fruit in this jan mind this birth when you do this sakama with desire when you do the meditation you will get the benefits out of it like whatever you ask for maybe you will get when you are living then after you leave what happens you will get like good lokas you will probably get a nice birth so all those will be the fruits after you die so this will be but obviously because you have desire in your mind all your next things it will be attached to desires only so it's not based on a liberation or you don't have those kind of things the palan will be there it will be very nice but it will be all related to desires and then if you do the upasana or the meditation uh, without having any desire for the fruits then again in this janma what you will get is you will progress spiritually and you will get the desire to get the knowledge and go in the path of jnana yoga jnana yoga basically is like karma yoga doing karma for the sake of god then shravanam mananam and dididhyasanam shravanam is you will listen to all these scriptures then you will get your doubts you will get uh, it clarified from a teacher and then you will contemplate on it and you will realize the truth so this is where you will go to if you do the upasana properly without having any desires in your mind that is you what fruits you get here is you can progress to jnana yoga because your mind will be so pure because it's focused on god alone when the knowledge is given to you immediately you realize 
So purity of mind is obtained to upasana and then jnana, when it is fed there, then it will lead to spiritual development. So then otherwise what happens is, okay, this person is doing upasana. He didn't go in the path of this jnana. He left his body. So what happens? He had developed vairagya. He is not doing anything for desire. He is just meditating on God. Then he will go to Brahma Loka or Satya Loka, the abode of Brahma. There again he has to get the jnana practice and there he will be liberated. So this is called as the Krama Mukti or the sequential liberation. Basically, what we are trying for is Jeevan Mukti. In this here and now, we want to be liberated. We are not waiting for something in heaven or after we die. We want to be liberated here and now. If it is not there, this is an alternate route. But you still have to do the last step of getting the knowledge and realizing it. But the thing is, there is a chance for you. So this whole chapter talks about Krama Mukti, of how this person will leave the body, he will go to the Brahma Loka, there he will get the knowledge and then he will be liberated. So this whole chapter is about that. So what are the four scenarios we saw? When you do Upasana, you can do Sakama Upasana or Nishkama Upasana. When you do the Sakama Upasana, here what will be the fruit? That you will get all the things you desire. And what will be the fruit after you die will be that you will go to good lokas. If you do Nishkam Upasana, what will be the fruits? After that, you will progress to Jnana Yoga. In this lifetime, you will get all the qualifications. The Sadhana Chatushtayam that we saw, you will, you will get all that preparationary qualifications and then you will progress very easily to Jnana Yoga. If you didn't go to Jnana Yoga, what you do is, if you have left the body thinking and contemplating on God, then you will reach the Brahma Loka through some practices and then from there you can be liberated. So this chapter focuses on this category of people who have done this Upasana throughout their life and at the time of death have contemplated on God and they could reach the Brahma Loka. From there they can further pursue their spiritual journey. So this whole chapter is about that and this is actually plan B. All the chapters in Bhagavad Gita are for getting Jeevan Mukti. If that is not possible, this is also there. So we will start with shloka number one. Arjuna vacha kim tad brahma kim adhyatmam kim karma purushottam adhibhutam cha kim proktam adhidevam kim uchyate Arjuna is asking Krishna. Please define these terms. Actually, shlokas 1 and 2 have to be read together. So, I will read shloka 2 as well. Adhi yajna katham kotra Dehe smin madhusudana Prayana kale cha katham Nyeyo siniyatatma bhihi As I said, it starts with this question from Arjuna asking what are these terms? So first she says, Arjuna Vacha, Arjuna asks, Kim Tat Brahma? What is this Brahman? You are talking about, you said this is Jnanis will come to know of all these terms. What is this Brahman? Kim Adhyatma? So what is this individual self that you talk about? The Adi meaning insight, which is inside the bodies. So what is this? Kim Karma? What is Karma? Purushottama? Oh, the one who is the Uttama, referring to Krishna. Adibhutam. So, Adibhutam is, we said that it pertains to the material manifestation. So, Adibhutam. Cha kim prokta. What is Adibhutam? Adidevam kim uchyate. So, what do they call as Adidevam? Adidevam, we said that it is a lord of all the gods. Like that we can say, we have seen those. Uh, names and meanings also, but again we will explain all that. Adidevam and Adi Yagnyaha. So Adi Yagnyaha is the lord of the sacrifices. So Katham Kaha Atra. So he has two questions in here. He says that what is Adi Yagnya, first of all, and how is it existing in this body? Katham Kaha Atra. How does it exist in this body and what is it? Dehe is mean Madhusudana in this body, O Madhusudana. Prayana Kale Chakatam. So at the time of death, 
katham niyayah asi niyatatma bihi niyatatma bihi is the people of the steadfast mind who are going in the spiritual path katham niyayah asi katham how will they know you that is niyatatma bihi prayana kale katham niyayah asi how will they know you who are the people who are endeavoring and people who are of the steadfast mind like that he is asking so it is just the questions that he has asked we will see the general translation arjuna said o supreme lord what is brahman what is adhyatma what is karma what is adibhuta who is said to be adi deva who is adi agnya in the body how is he the adi agnya o krishna how are you to be known at the time of death by those of the steadfast mind like that he asked that is just this two shlokas shloka number 3 shri bhagavan uvacha aksharam brahma paramam swabhavo dhyatma mucchate bhuta bhavo dhavakarah visargah karma sangitah so krishna starts to explain all these terms and then he says first let's see uh, the explanation and then we will see the individual meanings so he says aksharam brahma paramam so paramam brahma aksharam that is the brahman is aksharam which means indestructible aksharam meaning it will be elaborated and sanskrit as na sharati iti aksharam that is it is na something which is indestructible ashnute sarvam iti aksharam that which pervades everything such is the quality of this brahman like that krishna explained and then he uses the word parama which means supreme and uh, brahma also it uh, has several meanings one will be the vedas one will be the omkara one will be the brahmana jati one will be the saguna brahman and the other will be the nirguna brahman so here krishna is referring to uh, the nirguna brahman that meaning he is referring to the satyam gnanam anantam brahma that he is referring to so aksharam brahma parama so brahman is aksharam which is indestructible and parama which is very supreme like that he explains brahman and then he says swabhavah adhyatma mukchyate so adhyatma what is adhyatma adhyatma means pratyagatma which is adhi means insect that what is your true reality swabhavah chaitanya swarupam the your true nature that is what is inside you as your individual self it is like that he explained that is this true reality like that he explained the term for adhyatma so then he said inside the body swabhava means swarupam nature like that it denotes the atma when it is the foundation of all we refer to the name of the brahman when you are talking about the individual self we call it the atma but according to advaita vedanta both are the same there is no difference between the atma and the paramatma so that is adhyatma and then he starts to talk about karma karma meaning basically here in a general context how we will take it is whatever is action which is causing the birth or which is causing the body like that generally it can be taken so whatever good or bad you are doing that it gets accumulated as papa and punya the good and the bad and then from there based on that you get this body so that is called karma these are all actually very technical terms and in this specific context we will also see exactly what is the technical meaning of this there are two types of karmas that is one will be called as the uh, shrautam karma which is the karma which is told in the vedas and which is also smartam karma like what is told in the smritis so here he is talking about the karma which is told in the vedas that, that he is talking about and he is referring to the yagnas or the sacrifices that has been talked about in the vedas and based on that punya and papa is created and then based on the punya and papa you get the bodies like that he is referring to here very specifically if you remember in chapter 3 we had like some shlokas which talked about yagna and also it talked about how these beings are sustained 
அஹ் அன்னாத் பவந்தி பூதானி பஜன்யாத் அன்ன சம்பவ யஜாத் பவதி பஜன்ய யஜ்ய கர்ம சமுத்பவ லைக் ஹீ சேஸ் தட் ஆல் தீஸ் பேயிங்ஸ் தே ஆர் சஸ்டெயின் பை ஃபூட் அண்ட் ஹவு டஸ் திஸ் ஃபூட் கம் the food comes from rain and the rain comes from what from the agnyas or the sacrifices that have been performed so there is a cycle going on you don't know you think that this body just came but no there is a cycle so you have to feed into that cycle like that he said that was uh, shloka 14 uh, chapter 3 and then shloka 15 he said karma bhamma karma brahmod bhavam vidhi brahmakshara samudbhavam tasmat sarvagatam brahma nityam yagne pratishtitam so he said that whenever you are doing sacrifices know that it is god itself why the vedas came from god and all the karmas are told in the vedas so whenever you are doing something based on the vedas you are worshiping god himself so like that there is a connection between the yagnyas and yourself like that he told in chapter 3 what he is talking about here is the vedic karmas and yagna means what is the definition is that if you are sacrificing some material towards a devata it is called yagna so this gnani he knows what is the karma and he knows what is the cause of this body why krishna is describing all these terms is because he wants to say that this gnani knows what is brahman gnani knows what is this atma gnani knows what is this karma and why human beings come into existence and how to get relief from this so the gnani knows all these things so that is why he is bringing it here swabhavah adhyatma muchyate bhuta bhava udbhavakarah that means all the beings udbhavah it is been produced only by this karma visarga visarga means to leave so what you are doing is to leave some things in the fire which is the yagna visarga that is when you are leaving which is called the yagna when you are uh, dedicating some material objects to some devata in the yagna so that is leading to papa and punya and it causes the body to come forward this is known by the gnani like that he is telling we will go through the meanings shree bhagavan vacha so supreme lord said aksharam brahma parama so this brahman is aksharam and it is parama so two qualifying things he said it is supreme and it is indestructible swabhavah adhyatma muchyate so what is called as adhyatmam is basically your true real nature and this exists in you it is called as adhyatmam which is the same as your atma and then bhuta bhava udbhavakara actions pertaining to the living beings coming forward or the bodies being coming forward is what visarga visarga means this yagnas what you leave as sacrifice that only causes everything to come forward you to come forward karma sanghita this is called karma like that krishna said so the general translation is supreme lord said the supreme indestructible entity is called the brahman one soul self is called the adhyatma actions pertaining to the material personality of the living beings and its development is called karma or the fruitative activities shloka number 4 adhibhutam kshara bhavah purushascha adhidevatam adhiyagnyoh mevatra dehe deha bhrutam vara so here he says uh, we'll see the explanation first adibhutam he explains adibhutam here adibhutam is what is physically manifest we said that this is attributed the name given to this physical manifestation is called virat which is the macro cosmic form of this physical manifestation so all the all the gross objects that we see refers to the virat that is adibhuta and he says that kshara bhava so what is the nature of this it will be destroyed it will be a perishable he said brahman was aksharam and here he said that it this is kshara it is destructible perishable like that he has defined adibhuta this we will remember it as virat or the vishwarupam that cosmic form which denotes all the gross objects is this uh, adibhuta 
and then Purushaha Adidevatam. So Adidevatam or Adidevam, he is saying is this uh, Purusha. Purusha means basically the one who resides in a Puri or a city, like that the definition is given. So this Adi Devam is also residing in your body. Adi Bhutam is also a God, which is denotes the perishable entity, which is your body. It is God. And then the Adi Devam. Adi Devam is also residing here in us. And this refers to the macrocosmic subtle form or the Hiranyagarbha. So Hiranyagarbha relates to all the subtle things from where these gross things have come forward. The golden orb or the golden egg, the Hiranyagarbha. So that is basically Adi Devam. And Hiranyagarbha is said to be the lord of all the gods. In our body, all our senses are supposed to be governed by gods. The lord of this god is the Hiranyagarbha. So all the gods are actually subtle entities, just like we are talking about some powers, right? So that lord is Hiranyagarbha. That is from where everything has come forward. The gross things have come forward. So Adidevam first to the Hiranyagarbha. And Adiyagnyaha. Adiyagnyaha is nothing but the Ishwara himself. Ishwara meaning what? The macrocosmic seed form from which everything has come, subtle has come, so that the Hiranyagarbha and after that is Virat. So we said that the, always there are three stages, the seed form, the subtle form and the gross form. When you refer to the cosmic level, these are the names given. So this is Ishwara and this Ishwara is residing in our body too as a witness. You cannot do anything without the knowledge of Ishwara because he is there. If you hide and you go somewhere to unknown place where others can't see you till the recording is done. That because why the Ishwara is there as the witness. So the three things you have seen here are the Virat, which is the cosmic physical name given to this whole entity of the physical beings, which is perishable. And then there is the subtle form, which is referred to as a Hiranyagarbha. And then the Ishwara, which is the cosmic seedal form from which everything has come forward in this universe. So these are the three things he is referring to here in the shloka. And the Jnani knows all this. He knows what the body is. He knows all the senses are governed by this um, Hiranyagarbha. Then he knows that Ishwara is residing in his body. Everything is Ishwara that he knows, like that he is saying. So, um, we will see the meanings. Adi Bhutam. So, the ever-changing physical manifestation, Sharaha Bhavaha, perishable and Bhavaha nature. Purushaha Cha Adi Devatam. So, this Purusha, cosmic soul, from whose race all the individual souls are filled. And Adi Devatam. So, he is Adi Devatam. And then Adi Yagnyaha. Adi Yagnyaha is nothing but the Isha himself. Eva Atra Dehe Deha Brutam Vara. Vara means O best. So he starts with O Vara, the best of all. Like he is addressing Arjuna. So Krishna refers to himself here and he says, Ahameva, I am residing in all the bodies of these living beings in the embodied as the Adiyagnya, as a lord of all the sacrifices. Deha Deha Brutam. Deha Brutam meaning of the embodied. He is in the body of the embodied, uh, Krishna is saying. So, I, it is me only, who me in the form of Ishwara, Atra Dehe Deha Bratambara, in the body of the embodied, O oh, the best of all. So, the general translation is, O oh, the best of the embodied. The physical manifestation that is constantly changing is called Adibhuta, the universal form which presides over the celestial gods in this creation is called Adi Deva. I who dwell in the living being, I am Adi Yajna or the Lord of all sacrifices. Now Shloka 5. So he is going to the next topic. He finished in these two shlokas explanation of all the six terms. Then in this shloka, fifth shloka, he is going to Antakala Smarana, the remembrance at the time of death. Shloka number 5. Anta kale chama meva smaran mukva kale varam yaf prayati samadbhavam 
Yatinastyatra samshayaha. First we'll go through the explanation. He is explaining what is upasana. That is upasana means we said it is manasa vyaparam or dhyana. Meditation on Saguna Brahman. So many people do this to get the benefits in this birth. Like I want this and that. For that they can do the upasana. And some people, they said, they will get the good lokas. And some people, they do it without desires. They will go in the path of jnana and they will get the knowledge and probably they could realize when they are doing upasana at the time of the death. He says that when one does this, then he will attain me. He will attain me in the sense sequentially. If they will go to Brahma Loka. From Brahma Loka, they will try to get the jnana and then from there, they will get the liberation. That's what he's saying. He will explain this in the next shlokas. The meaning is antakale cha mam eva. So antakale means at the time of death, cha, he has included the word cha. He wants to say that people who remember me and he put this word cha also, meaning in the time of death also, not just in the time of death. That means what whole life you have remembered God and at the time of death also, it has come as a natural process to you because of the consequence of you doing this as a lifelong practice. So he says, Antakale cha maam eva, me alone, what have you done? Smaran muktva kalevara. Kalevara means the body. And then smaran muktva. So you have remembered me and you have relinquished your body in such a way, in which way? Remembering me alone. Also at the time of death. In your life and also at the time of death. Yaha prayati saha madbhava. So whoever uh, goes like this, he will get me. Madbhava. He will get me alone. Yati. He will achieve me. Yati madbhava. Na asti atra samshayaha. There is no doubt regarding this. So yaha antakale chakalevaram maameva smaran muktva. Like whenever he departs this body, thinking of me, then prayati saha madbhavam yati. So he will get this uh, me alone. Atra samchayaha nasti. There is no doubt at all regarding this. Like that he says. So the general meaning is, those who relinquish the body while remembering me at the time of the death, will definitely attain me. There is certainly no doubt about this. So he is giving an assurance here that don't doubt this fact. Definitely they will come to me. Like that he is giving assurance. Loka number 6. Yam yam vapismaran bhavam tyajatyante kalevaram tam tam evaiti kontyeya here he says that whatever people think when they leave the body, they will attain. This is the rule. Whatever you are thinking, you will attain. So to think about God at the time of the death, you should have thought about God all your life. So that is the second rule, unsaid rule. So, in uh, Mundaka Upanishad, the reference is given in this mantra, Kaman yaha kamyate manyamanaha sa kama bhir jayate tatra tatra paryapta kamasya krutatmanastu ihaiva sarve praviliyanti kamaha. That means what is being said here is in Mundaka Upanishad, one who cherishes the objects desiring them is born again here. Or through his desires. But for him whose desires are satisfied and who is established in the self, all desires vanish even here on the earth. So whatever desires you have in your life, at the last moment, you will have it. If you are attached very much to your dog, if you are attached very much to your children, if you are attached very much to your money, investments, all that thought will come at the time of your death. That time of your death will decide your future births. And what will come at the time of death is the practice that you have done throughout your life. So people will say that, okay, I will enjoy life now. After the age of 60, I will start the spiritual practice. 
but suddenly that spiritual practice will not come because your samskaras are already built. To override that, you have to put extraordinary amount of effort and uh, that too at that old age, uh, you think it is going to be easy. They say that no, it is not going to be easy. Whenever you get to old age, the more and more worries will come. Raja Govindam also, uh, he will say, Vridha Stavata Chinta Saktaha. That means when you are old, you will be having a lot of worries about your children, about your financial stability, about your grandchildren maybe. So all these things will also only come as a natural thing, but the spirituality will not come. How we develop is to have that automatic thought is that three steps are there. First is Abhyasa or practice. Whatever you keep practicing every day in your life, day to day you practice. So that will become samskaras or impressions. So you saw that gulab jamun, right? So every time you saw the gulab jamun, you want to eat it. That became your samskar. So next time you see this gulab jamun, you cannot resist it. Because what? The automatic impression has been formed. The impression, the samskara has become your automatic thoughts. And that is what is your nature. When people talk about nature, they say, this is my nature. As though somebody has come and given that nature to them. It is not given by God or it is not given by anybody. It has been created by yourself, by these habits. Day in and day out, what you chose in your life has led to these samskaras. And because of those samskaras, it became your nature. So if you have to change your nature, you have to change your day-to-day -day living. Only then, at that time when you want to act like that, for an Olympics champion, if he goes and swims one day, is he going to get the medal? No, he has to make it automatic. He has to make it effortless. Similarly, like that only, spirituality is also one day suddenly in your old age, you will not get the name of Rama or Krishna in your mind or the form. You have to be practiced from the very young age. So that is what has been emphasized here. And the very famous reference is there of Jada Bharata. You all may be knowing this famous story. Anyway, I will say it again because it is very important and relevant here. So Bharata is the son of Shakuntala and Dushyant. And he was a very good ruler and he was a just ruler. He did all his duties properly. He had a family and after some time he felt that he must progress spiritually. So he left his kingdom and then he went and took Vanaprastha, which means like a reclusive life. And then he wanted to take sannyas. So he daily practice, he follows the spiritual practices and everything very rigorously. And then one day what he sees is there is a pregnant doe drinking water in a river. And then suddenly a lion comes. And due to the fear, what this doe does is it jumps and it hits a rock. And because this doe is pregnant, it gives birth to its child in midair. And then the doe has died. So now seeing the plight of this small doe, Jada Bharata takes it and he uh, takes care of this doe. So he becomes very attached to his doe and he starts to spend less and less time for his spiritual practices. He left this kingdom. He left his children, he left all those things. But ironically, he gets attached to this doe. Then what happens is, at the time of death, the doe is nowhere to be seen. So he keeps thinking about this doe. Where is this doe? Where is this doe? And he leaves the body. So next janma, he gets the body of a doe. But because of the purva samskaras, that he was spiritually inclined, and he gets into the company of the rishis. He is outside the rishi ashram where he is able to hear all these spiritual discourses. So he is listening to it even though, you know, thinking of the doe, he took the doe body and everything. And then this doe dies and next janma he takes in a Brahmin a rich family. A Brahmin is a very rich person. He leaves the property to his children. But in this Janma, what Bharata does is he doesn't talk to anybody because he knows that he didn't continue properly in the spiritual path because of the mistake. He realizes that and he acts dumb. He doesn't mix with the world and everything. So what people in the family think that he is a very dumb person is good for nothing. So they don't give him any property. They don't give him any importance and they treat him very bad. But Bharata, he doesn't pay any importance and he in his mind, his only thing is to progress spiritually. 
So one day he is sitting below a tree and the king of that land passes by. And one of the persons who is bearing the palanquin, he gets hurt. So when they see Jadabharada, who is strong and young and everything, sitting under the tree, they say, oh, come here, come here, do this work, carry the palanquin for the king. Jadabharada doesn't respond. They just pull him and they make him carry the palanquin. And then when he carries the palanquin, the king feels that it is somehow, you know, uneven. The somebody is not carrying it properly. So he shouts at Jada Bharata. He says, you are the new person. You must be doing the mistake. Are you tired or weary? Why are you doing this? So at that time, Jada Bharata speaks. He says that, what are you calling as weary? If you are talking about my body, my body is only an inert substance. It is Jada. It cannot be weary. When you are talking about the Atma, it cannot be weary either. The reality in me, the same as reality in you, the same as the reality in universe, it is all the same. It cannot be weary. So when he said these words, the king realizes that he is such a great person and he falls at his feet. And then Bharata, he continues on a spiritual journey and then he gets enlightenment. So this story is often highlighted to emphasize that if you are attached to something, in your life, very much attached to your kids or to your pet or whatever, the last moment this thought will only come. You should make sure you are not too attached. You are doing your duties for everybody around you, but at the same time, you are not too attached that it will derail you from your spiritual progress. So you should perform Nishkama Bhasana. Make this your daily practice. This practice only will lead to your samskaras. The samskaras lead to the nature. Once if you see Gulab Jamun and say, I'm not going to eat it, you develop another thought, then therefore different samskaras, your nature will also change. So like that, we have to practice. And how are we developing these good samskaras? Also through listening to good things. So your intellect is also feeding good things at the time when it is needed. So that is also an important thing that you have to do. So that is emphasis here. So we will go through the meanings. Yam yam va api smaran bhavam. So yam yam, yam yam means whatever a person is thinking all the time. Tyajati ante kalevara. He will give up the body thinking about that. Then what happens? Tamta eva eti kaunteya. So that only he will get. Eti means get. Tamta. Tam means that. Eti. He will get that. O Arjuna. Sada tad bhava bhavitaha. Therefore, what you should do? Sada always tad bhava. Be absorbed in the contemplation of that. That supreme reality. That should be your only focus. Like that he is saying. So, whatever one remembers upon giving up the body at the time of death, O son of Kunti, one attains that state, being always absorbed in such contemplation. Shoka number 7 also will finish. Tasmat sarveshu kaleshu mamanusmara yudhyaja mayar pitamano buddhihi Okay, so here what he is saying is, think of me and do your duty always. For a fight, like that when he is addressing Arjuna, that means what? Swadharmam Kuru. Do your duty. That's what Krishna is telling everybody. Do your duty. How? By remembering me. Think of me and do your duty. Think of me always in your life. So at the time of death, consequentially, my thought will come to you. And how? By using both your mind and your intellect. The mind will have these automatic patterns which will go to the things that you like. It could be your automatic pattern. How? Through practice that you have developed, not in this birth, but through various janmas you have developed. You have practiced those things and that came as your samskara and hence your nature. So the mind may be drawn with automatic thoughts, but what will you do? The intellect is there. Intellect is there. No, this is not good for you. Don't eat it. So that should come. How? Because of constant reinforcement. Like when we are listening to good things again and again, okay, this is what has been said in our scriptures. Like that, that thought will come at that time. That is why this satsang is like very much uh, of importance because we forget when we go in our daily lives, we forget about all these things. 
but then constant remembrance of that will help our intellect to become strong therefore it will pull our mind from unwanted things maya arpita mano buddhi mano manas and buddhi both you should be linked to me and then like how ramakrishna paramamsa gives example like the child holding to this pillar and he is going around this pillar if he leaves the pillar he will fall down if he doesn't leave the pillar he will not fall down like that hold on to god like that you stay in this world doing everything but holding on to that pillar other examples are there mother of a newborn when the child is born the mother is really busy doing other things but what is in the back of her mind her newborn her baby similarly when village women take water in the pots top of their head they are walking but at the same time they are remembering the water shouldn't spill like that when you go in a tour bus so they will ask you to get down in one stop and say okay you can take pictures go around this place but come back in half an hour so you are doing everything you are taking pictures you are having a good time you are talking laughing but back of the mind what is there i have to go back in half an hour to get the bus similarly develop your life in such a way that it is connected to god don't go away from the thought of god even when doing your duties that is what has been said here what is say tasma sarveshu kaleshu therefore at all times o arjuna anusmara yudhya cha so remember me and fight remember me and do your duty do your duty nobody is saying you must sit and uh, like be in a puja room you have other things to do but attach it somehow to god like grandmothers grandfathers they used to connect everything with god today there is this puja today there is this today we have to go for pilgrimage like that everything was connected recreation was connected to god like that you lead your life that will give you the lifestyle that is needed to remember me at the time of death mai arpita manaha buddhi both the mind and the intellect should be focused in one direction not the intellect saying one thing mind saying another thing both have to be uh, like agreeing on one topic mam eva eshasi asamshaya without doubt again he says without doubt then eshasi means you shall attain mam eva so you will attain me definitely like that he promises so the general translation is therefore always remember me and also do your duty of fighting the war with mind and intellect surrender to me you will definitely attain me there is no doubt